Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about the NWA, remembering Kane, Cena beating himself, Chachi's Kanish, and WrestleFan wants us to hold the fuck on. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You gotta react to him. From the lights of the old Tammy in Columbus, Ohio, the team of Genuine John Simpson, the pitcher, Jeremy Madrox, Team Hickton. He literally just kicked the cameraman in the nuts. What the hell? Kick the camera guy in the nuts! What in the hell, Jock Samson? Team Hip Toss, as they like to be called, making their way to the ring, I cannot believe. Josh that Samson. was beautiful! Hey, how was that sound check, huh? Unbelievable! Well, folks, I enjoy myself a hip toss every oh, now and then. Oh, I take back whatever I said about this. Hip toss, baby. Chuck Sampson, how dare you? you? How dare you attack oh, a member of our video group? Did he just really kiss your hand? Yes, I am the one and only wrestling reverend, Church. And people do that for me. Oh, my God. Chuck Sampson has just displayed some luck. I mean, I thought he was low last month injuring Matt Mason, but it just got worse. He kicked the cameraman right in the commission. Unbelievable. Team hip toss, baby. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time in the time. What's up, you delicious fucking little pieces of chicken? This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You've done well today. You accomplished something. You got out of bed. You put in earphones and you found the greatest goddamn wrestling podcast anywhere on the internet. I am DJ Lunchbox, a.k.a. Papa Lunchbox this week, and I am uh, bringing us into this lovely show. Uh, the master of ceremonies, the man in charge of everything, the man behind the boards, ladies and gentlemen, Sorgatron. How's it going? Thanks for that introduction there. DJ Lunchbox, we are here in the newly restructured Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk some wrestling, ready to talk some mayhem with you, and uh, to pass it along here over on the couch, the relocated couch, with his uh, voice maybe in a uh, low falsetto uh, this week after that clip you saw at the beginning of the show, is Chachi, insert coin to begin.com, at Chachi Says. My voice is fine. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. I'm just sick of fucking rednecks who think they can attack people that are yeah, holding what thousands of dollars worth of equipment. And he just comes out and boots me in the Kanish. In the Kanish! <laughs> in the Kanish. He's been saying Kanish all week, by the way. <laughs> Wait, isn't a Kanish like a Jewish pastry? Yeah. I thought it was Italian. I don't know. I didn't know you were anywhere it's near. It's from Europe. I didn't know you were anywhere near Jewish, sir. Hey, according to the Big Bang Theory, you guys don't have any Jews in Texas. Mm. Nope, that's not no. And there he is from the uh, No Jew Land. Is the Wrestle fan in uh, San Antonio, the, Texas? The no Jew Land. Thank I you, guess. Sorgatron. Not rest is the Wrestle fan here. Not getting kicked in the nuts by Southern people, which it would be more <laughs> obvious here since I'm in the South. But hey, it's the Wrestle. Yeah, fan how come show. I'm the one that gets? Here. How come I'm the one that gets kicked in the dick by a redneck, and he lives in redneck country? It's it's a it's an odd scenario, Chachi. Uh. I don't know. Fucking rednecks. Yes, and of course, that, you know, do I reintroduce DJ Lunchbox? Hi. Hey, DJ Lunchbox. I'm the guy from before who did the intro. What's up? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is, of course, Wrestling Mayhem Show. That's not right. This no. is Wrestling Mayhem Show number 338. Uh, you can find out all of our episodes and columns and videos and people are posting over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can also uh, you can find us on your iTunes, Blip TV, the Roku uh, boxes on the Blip TV app. Anywhere else has a Blip TV app. Uh, so I believe the uh, the Box, Boxy TV may also have us. Also, we're on Stitcher uh, and we're on your YouTube. Something's falling somewhere. Uh, you can also contact us on our Twitters at Mayhem Show. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus. We have a wonderful open group where we do a lot of our conversing uh, on Facebook uh, under Wrestling Mayhem Show, of course. And you can also drop us a line the good old fashioned email way at. 
Good time. Well, just one. Just one. What was that? What the fuck, people? Well, you're all alone. Where's everybody else at? I, I dropped the show down one person and nobody knows what's going on. The I chat room's doing it. it. John, I, the chat room's doing it. I was not paying attention. I was reading tweets from my millions of fans. Thousands yeah, and hundreds of fans. I wasn't paying attention either. I was falling into the tree. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's making sure this show goes Ooh. off smoothly um do it again ah uh, you can drop us an email at that good old address time. Uh, good times. that's the organized mess i know and love good times at wrestling man show.com or drop a line at 412206wms0 that's 9670 if you don't have the letters on your phone hmm uh <laughs> if you, you can don't also, don't also where's my phone at where did where did i put that thing also we're on the iphones we're on uh the uh ipads on your android device uh in the uh uh google or uh, i'm sorry the amazon app store uh we're also in uh the ios app store just a dollar 99 you get Look all the at it! easy access to all the episodes bonus material that you do not see uh anywhere else on the internet it's a little bit just just a little bit here and there you know some more Kanish talk. Kanish! Or something like that. Um, yes. Wait until later when we kick Zorg right into Kanish. No! Live no, on no, no. air! Live on no, air! No, no. Go out and spend that $1.99 and listen to us kick him into Kanish. That is not a true thing that, that might happen. Um, so let's get right into the only way we know how with the emails. I got it. He's got it? I got one. All right, one from Chachi. Yes? Hola, amigos. Whoa. I have learned many more English since last email. Good. Mucho gracias <laughs> for the support. I saw the Monday Night Raw last night, and naturally my favorite match of the night was the Lucha Libre Showcase of Rey Mysterio Jr. Note proper spelling, Jaja. And Sin Cara. Also caught a glimpse of Nocho de Campeones last night, and I believe Ms. Cara should be trending right about now. Ole! El Gran Azul. I knew that email was going to be awesome the minute he said that he learned many more English. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's been everywhere. He popped up. I think he popped, he popped up. I think Olay! on our on our group, he popped up on the uh, inter, uh, the IWC uh, board on Facebook. He, he's been he's been around. The Wait, Grand can we, Azul. Can we just do that again? Why? But one more time. Part? Just one more time. Which part? Ole! Ole! All right, and we got another one. It's a little bit of a long one. I don't know if Russell Finn, or I'm sorry, LB, you want to break can this do down it. a little bit. He can do it. I'm all over it. <laughs> oh, and Chachi. I messed it up. Ch Chachi, Alexander in the chat room says, it's pronounced, ha ha. I'm presuming that's how he's going. No, it says, no? it says, ja ja. Ja ja? Yeah. It's not in Spanish, Chachi. Listen, he did not, he did not put the ch over the J that turned the, it from <laughs> a J wait, wait, to an H. What did he not put over it? A ch Did you say a the ch chica? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, oh, all right. And you, right. and you wonder why people from the South hate you. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he didn't put the n or the ch over the, the J that turned it from a J to an H. Therefore, I read it as a J. Wow. Getting deep with this shit. <laughs> That's actually a Jeff Dunham joke. <laughs> uh, probably Not yeah. original. No. That's fine. Uh, All right. Well, anyways, we got <laughs> so uh, LB. I believe you have the next email. I do. Uh, Does it have any chickas? I think we are. Uh, not that I've seen. Yes, yet. Uh, if I come, <laughs> yet. I will let you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, hello. All right, all right. Yeah, work it out. Work it out. Hold so, on. I'm trying to bring uh, up the music. Uh, got to get the the back of the throat. <laughs> We can work it out, work it out. Just walk hey. it out. Just walk hey. it out. What's going on, Mayhem Crew? <laughs> it's me. It's me. It's Big PPC. Night of Champions. WWE. <laughs> very happy that Lawyer is doing well. But very, very happy we have the one and only billionaire self made man, the wrestling. Good. JB, oh, man. John I can't do that at the right time. 
<laughs> Perfect replacement as far as I'm concerned. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know it. <laughs> the Broski won the Battle Royal. Impressive showing by primetime players and tense by not bad by the Fox Source either. Cameron's back. Drunk is on the roll. Drunk is on the roll. Nice to have the funk back. Eve beat Layla. Whatever, somebody attack Caitlyn. It should be a triple threat match anyway. Who gives a damn? They all look good, and Eve, I, the only one of any personality or story, so. Yeah. <laughs> Hooray! Team Friendship slash Team No No Flamers slash Team Hellfire Hugs slash Kane and Brian beat Cody and Truth. In one night, Kane and Brian were more entertaining than Kofi and Truth were their entire run. I was wrong, by the way. The black guys didn't win this one. Shocker! Miz beat Ray, Cody, and Kara. I liked the finish with Miz, had the mask, and Cole crushed Cody for the win. Mexicans lose! Mexicans lose! <laughs> In, oh, in the Nelson voice from The Simpsons. Uh... Mexicans lose! Mexicans lose! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but I had the loss to Saddle squashed him too! Whoa, whoa, whoa! You lost. <laughs> Santino has a big cobra swallower than usual at Bath Royal. He tried to pin people like the fruity maluti and the booty cobra having lame excuse for the champ we had for the United States. Fucking pathetic. <laughs> Spitting noise. Orton didn't beat Ziggler for no fucking reason. Unless it's to keep Ziggler busy until he cashes in. Sent Orton won, and they all could have him fight Sheamus. He and Helen sell after Orton wins or loses, they could have Ziggler cash in after sell match. That sentence didn't make any sense. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Calling it... I don't know what he's calling. Sheamus wins against Del Rio. Primetime players get win to get title shot. Caitlyn Pat Royal win and Sheamus broke kick being banned were all scrapped. What's the point of watching SmackDown when they're scrapped on Raw segments a few nights later or whatever? Sheamus needs a new opponent. Damn. Seen the beat Punk? Hell no, his shoulders were down. Soon in the pins himself serves him right for not doing er, serves him right for doing new moves. No loud super Cena stick to five moods of doom. Ugh. I guess we get punk and Cena in a cell now. Does anyone want to see this? I guess. Raw. And I wonder if that's gonna happen because he's supposed to be out four to six weeks now. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. it was reported on the uh, the the dirt sheets four to six. WWE is reporting two to three. Ah, uh, you know, it's probably conveniently <laughs> just in time for the next show. Hey, I want to watch them in a cage. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd watch it. That was yeah. a damn good match. Mm -hmm. Santino was decimated by Ziggler. It was fucking great. Ziggler made him look like the penis joke that you tell your friends in a circle jerk that was referred to a few weeks ago. <laughs> yes, penis cobra, you get it. Anyways, Ziggler dominated fucking name, ridiculous excuse for a wrestler, and all around slopper Santino. Holy referees, major malfunction. Epico and Primo versus Mexican masked marvels. Mexican win again. I smell tag team division heating up. No wait. That is just so shit I stepped in, called <laughs> the want-to-be tag division. Primetime players deserve their shot. Punk and Heyman stuff is amazing. Ziggler is doing great. High hopes for Antonio Cesar and the Wade Barrett or Damien Sandow to get pushed, hopefully. Who do you think should get the next push to main EVT level Mayhem Crew? Who do you think will break out stars from NXT? I like Seth Rollins, Cassius Tono, and Bray Wyatt. Dean Bros is pretty good too. Till next time, it's me, it's me, it's Big BPC. P.S. Did you like my English sounding impression last week? Russian laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Big PPC. 
All right, you had some questions in there, right? Who do you think will be the next breakout stars from NXT? Well, the problem is, I don't think any of us here are really watching NXT on a regular basis, are what's, we? What's NXT? Yeah, but they, it's kind of hard uh, to get to. I've watched a couple episodes are recently. Are you talking about Saturday morning slam? No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. The Russian music's still going. Um, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about Saturday Slam, although that's been fun, too. What's NXT? Uh, a show that's locally and international, and you don't get it. Oh. Hmm. Seth Rollins. It'll be Seth Rollins. Hopefully it's Seth Rollins. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's sort of the obvious one that stands out. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and say Miz. Uh, I'm going to say... Does that fit? Does I'm going to say Jinder Mahal. Not really, but okay. Jinder Mahal? Anybody? No? Technically he's on NXT. Yeah, sure. Ambrose at a house show. He did well. Yeah, yeah. I've been hearing good things about that. I mean, there was something where he was like mixing it up with uh, uh, Mick Foley for a little bit there, actually. So, I don't know. It, it's... I, yeah, we, we don't see get to see enough of it, I think, to make a decision, amongst us at least. So, um, let's see. Uh, high hopes. <laughs> Who do you think should get the next push to the main event level? Uh, and this is after he's talking about, of course, uh, Cesaro, Wade Barrett, Damian Sandow. I don't think those guys, maybe Barrett. Barrett's no. been around long enough, Wade but I don't think Barrett. he's in a, I don't think they're really positioning him to do that. He's in that rebuilding phase. No, Wade So Barrett. he's going to do what he's doing for a while. Wade Barrett will be just fine if he gets involved with the IC belt or the U.S. belt. And yeah. see, see, my whole problem with Wade Barrett is he has the whole Randy Orton thing going for him. What do you mean? Well, he's going to do something to screw it up. Oh, yeah. Either he's going to get injured when he's starting to get pushed for the main event, or he's going to hit the pipe too hard, or he's going to do something well, to he, screw he, it up. It's always been well, injuries, hasn't well, it? Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. It's not like he has a history. Wait, I, no, he's, Brian, he's only been injured no. once, from yeah. what I remember. Yeah, Daniel, not Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton has a history of uh, drugs and injuries. <laughs> um, fucking... And Wade Barrett has just had this one injury. Yeah, yeah. This is the only real setback that yes. he's had. Yes. You know? Oh, I and mean, the core. I, I'm, I'm the core saying, was a huge setback. I am saying that it's the first of many. Okay. I, I, am, I am saying you, that... You're saying every you, you time, see that in his future. Anytime he gets to where he's about to be pushed for a main event, he's gonna if something is going to happen, and it's just going to fuck him up. Okay. I, that's I, I don't see him... I and I don't like him, so it doesn't bother me. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> like this guy. Okay, I don't. I don't think they'll push him hard for a main event because he's British. No, really, really, yeah. really, really, really. In the day and really, age where we're making really, a big thing, because they're pushing the shit out of Sheamus. Yeah, we got we got Sheamus versus uh uh I won't call Cesaro uh D- Del Rio. So that's like a completely un-American feud going on there okay I, I don't think there's anything wrong with him being british i, I was okay gonna... when, when was the last british wrestler that got a big push uh... because william regal never got a big push yeah william regal is now taking out trash on smackdown because apparently that's the job you get downgraded to <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah i guess there never really has been a british but that, but i mean i mean i'd like for them but he can be the first What's that? Yeah, he could be the first. I mean, especially today, because I think there's really a big push for the foreign guys going on right now. Because they want to be they want to be known as world wrestling entertainment. They're going to all these other places. Sheamus is a perfect example of, you know, he's the first Irish bread champion. Uh, the, so, only, the only difference why not? with Barrett is that the difference with Barrett is that I don't think they're. Oh, and they're not emphasizing the fact that he is British. Yes, they do. You can tell when he has his accent and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But they're not like hammering it down your throat like they do with like Seamus. Oh no, shit! No, look, no. He's Irish. Everything Irish. 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 No. Same with Del Rio. Yeah. You know. Can I? I, I but he. I mean, he could be one that they could push that way. I don't. I don't know if they necessarily need to push him that way. Mm-hmm. But who said? I definitely see a lot in his future. I. I definitely see. Before he had gotten injured, he had gotten a great push. He had, you know, done a lot of interesting stuff. And this new character he's doing, I really, I'm really enjoying because mm. his style. I like the fact that his style, he's he's changed his style to that matches the character that he's portraying of this like pit fighter sort of like intense, you know, fight just a fighter. That's what he's been portraying in his move set, and you know what he's been doing in the ring, and I. I actually, I really do see a bright future for Wade Barrett, and God, I hope so. Because SmackDown, if I have to watch another Sheamus Alberto Del Rio match, seriously, 
<laughs> please, we're, please, please do something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're kind of in that in that run right now, you know, where they they stick with somebody. Chachi, you had something you want to say? Uh, it, maybe it was just myself, but um, did anyone notice last night that WWE was appealing to the rest of the world? How do How do you mean? Uh, well, they had Antonio Cesaro, mm-hmm. uh, United States Champion, uh, extremely well educated, uh, and puts it out there. Mm-hmm. But maybe no, it wasn't. You're thinking Sandow. Yeah, Sandow, Damian Sandow. Well, yeah. extremely uh, well educated. Uh, well, Cesaro, they, Cesaro, they push his worldliness, you know. Well, and and that was the previous night. But it, did you happen to notice who they had them wrestling? Gabriel and Barrett. No. No wait, wait I'm mixing matches. You know, um... Zach Ryder. Okay. Who is the typical dumb American? Okay. The broski, the, the 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 yeah, the, the, the their version of the Jersey came, Shore guys, even yeah, though it's Long Island. He yeah. came out and proved, a, a, oh, I mean, as far as the rest of the world goes, American intelligent by saying, uh, "I'm going to teach you three words. Shut up now." <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Well, there's an appeal here. Yeah. And the the foreign push is happening already. Whether you want, oh well, no, 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 because because Sandow isn't even foreign. Mm-hmm. He's got a very foreign look, but I and I, Chachi, I agree. I think you're, you're exactly right. That's an excellent point to make. But um, it, it makes me sad that the guys who are portraying intelligence and worldliness are the heels. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, actually, we've been having well, a little... no. It, it, that makes perfect sense mm-hmm. because I was going to bring this up later in the show. Mm-hmm. But right now, the heels are more popular than the faces. Yep, well, that's why there's so many of them. They're the more interesting people. What are, what's the thing that I always say? What do you always hear wrestlers say? I'd ra- I'd rather play the heel because it's more fun. Well, yeah, for one thing, mm-hmm. you get the big, you get the work outside the box. Because if you're a face, you can't do this, this, and this. Because then you'd be the heel. You know, CM Punk, perfect example. That, that's why. That that's why Wrestle Fan and I had an argument over CM Punk for so long. Uh huh. Yeah, because he I, was. A, that, go ahead. For those that don't know, I did. I I will correct myself. I will apologize to you, Chachi. CM Punk is a heel, but it's like you said, I just think he's cooler. He's well, the, he, it's, but that's why I support him, you know? Right. Yes, he's doing a heel stuff. I Honestly, WWE's doing everything in their power besides him kicking a puppy to make him a heel. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing right now. I mean, that's what the fans want. The fans are backing all of these heels. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, last night on Miss TV... Mm-hmm. Anytime Booker T looked like he was starting to talk, the crowd was chanting "boring." Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's if necessary. I thought that was directed to Booker T. I thought but that was I, I get what you're miss, saying. But right. yeah, but I mean, it, it, they're cheering the the heels, booing the faces, or mocking the faces. I mean, everything is heel right now. Yeah. So. You're right, and that that kind of explains why they're pushing Sheamus in the way that he is, because he's, I mean, we've said again and again, he's just acting like a heel, but he's still a face. Right. Because mm-hmm. that's what's popular right now. Mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. We've hit on something very important here, I think. Well, I think we've uh, we've uncovered something. Well, and the only reason I brought that up when I did is because of what you said with the uh, the intelligent foreign guys being heels. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, they're they're being heels, but right now that's what's popular. That's what the people want. So that it makes perfect sense that the the foreign educated guys are getting pushed as heels. Not even the, not, and not even just the foreign educated ones, like David Atunga, for example. That was it was Th- slashed. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't put the pause in there, but that was it. There was yeah. a slash. Well, yeah. There. Okay, yeah. But, like, that's the thing. David Atunga never really does anything wrong. He's highly educated. He was getting behind one of the wrestlers to ban the bro kick. He wasn't doing anything wrong, but he was being punished. Like, he would give all this evidence to Booker T and, you know, show him the effects of the bro kick. Uh, So what Booker T did was he punished him by putting him in matches with, you know, intimidating people. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Like... Same goes with uh, when he uh, Atunga interacts with AJ, and he tells AJ that uh, he wants to give her legal guidance and protect her 
from anyone that calls her crazy saying that he's going to sue the pants off of anyone that calls her crazy. She hears the word crazy and punishes him by putting him in the match of the big show. Well, that's just the way she's acting right yeah, now. Yeah, that, that's her cack. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's reacting. that's her. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and I yeah, but that's the thing. He does there's people that do honestly nothing wrong but just get punished in these matches. And that's the thing. You want to see heels get their comeuppance. You want to see heels get beat up. You know, that's the basis of not, wrestling. Not necessarily. I, uh, well, I, 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 that's what it's been for a long time. That's, that, been like that's, simple... that's the old old way of doing things. Yeah. That's that's the standard way of doing things because you. Want... I don't want to. I don't want to see. I don't want to see heels get cheated out of stuff and then complain about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to I... see them do something wrong and get beaten for it because it's too easy. Oh. It's too easy that way. All WWE is doing right now is taking the the Stone Cold effect. And applying it to everyone. A little bit, little bit. It's a little more gray area, but there's there's obvious points where they're like, you know, they they are following the old school thing. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. It, it, it's it's you know not reinventing the wheel or anything like that. Uh, but it works. You know, the kids eat it up. Yeah. Well, so the kids uh, the kids will eat it kids. up no matter what. <laughs> <Kids. That's> a- <laughs> the kids are the only ones right now that boo the heels. So that's a problem though, because we're we're okay. WWE has to cover a lot of ground here. Let's think about it this way. They, again, they're world entertainment. Um, they they got the kids. Standard good guy bad guy stuff appeals to them, right? Should be, I, I would think, right? Mm. Good versus evil, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, us that's older are seeing the. No, CM Bunk's cooler, so I'm going to go cheer for him. Now everybody has somebody to cheer for. And it's yeah. more interesting, but whereas a little kid will say, oh, no, I'm going to be, you know, John Cena's the superhero. CM Punk's being the the bratty bad guy, whatever, getting away with things. And I, and that's I don't clear necessarily... That, it, it's one of those things that plays clear cut to that mentality, but then we look at it and say, oh, he's doing such a good job of being an asshole. So I'm yeah. going to so I'm going to cheer for CM Punk. You know? But I it's, mean, not, it's not necessarily that. I think it's also... It's a combination of kids and also adults who are sort of more more the general fan and okay. more of the fan that will sort of digest what the WWE is telling them. Yeah, and that's fine. And, and, and the, the ones that aren't going to stand up and think any different. Yeah, that's fine. The that, but the ones that if WWE tells you something, if WWE is explicitly giving you all this stuff to say CM Punk is a heel that are going to boost CM Punk. Mm-hmm. You know, there are some fans that are gonna, that are going to stand out. And that are going to sort of, in a sense, think on their own. It's not necessarily because they're smart fans. It's not necessarily because they want to be, you know, edgy and boo the heels. It's just they'll, they don't necessarily digest everything WWE is feeding them. Yeah, yeah. And there's a little bit of like an anti thing going on there when it comes yeah, to these it, guys. It, and that, and that's fine. Really cool. and, those, and those people are being serviced by 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 cheering for guys like you know, I, I, you know, the hangout, everybody marks for Sando, do a cartwheel, you know, or, or something <laughs> ridiculous like that. That's the stuff that entertains us, but we're the ones that create our own uh, inventive hashtags when they do yeah. a raw act. Did they do a raw act of last night? They didn't. They did not do a raw act? That's interesting. That's interesting. But, um, but yeah, let's move on from there. I don't think there's any other fan interactions. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. No, that was it. I, think I that believe was it. that's it. Alrighty. And that uh, was enough. Uh, because we got yeah yeah twenty five minute conversation out of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry about the NXT thing. So, Wrestle Fan, tell us what's going on. In the amateur falling down this week. This week in the indie minute, ladies and gentlemen. Well, first let's talk about the thing that's obviously on everyone's mind here on the show. Um, Renegade Wrestling Alliance this past weekend uh, had a great event at Fall Free for All Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silver Chop Media was in attendance for that, and it was a great. Uh, from what I hear, it was an amazing show. Uh, let's let's uh, talk about the thing that's on everyone's mind. I know Chachi probably has a lot to say about that. Mm-hmm. What just happened there? Um, so I, I Ch- Chachi, what 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 happened? What 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 what's going on? Well, I, last week we had Jock Sampson on the show. That was two weeks show. ago, I two believe. Weeks. Two weeks yeah. ago, yeah. Two weeks ago we had Jock Sampson on the show. Um, we pretty much insulted him right to his face, as much as possible. Um, and he has had a history of attacking use, uh, not useless, um, (laughs) uh, helpless, helpless people, uh, before his match, Mm -hmm. uh, last month it was wheels, 
And this month he decided he was going to take his aggressions out on me, who had his hands full with a, a very expensive uh, camera. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But he came out, he, he said, hey, Chachi, how's it going? And then, bam, right in the knish. He kicked me in the nuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, do you think he was going to hug you? Huh? <laughs> I didn't think he was going to kick me in the nuts. But, you know. So yeah. yeah, I mean it was it was a good show. Um, honestly, we went in thinking that uh, we weren't sure what was. No, no, happen. yeah, I, I, there wasn't much that really stuck out to me. I mean, I, I told you I had the same feeling of going into the proving grounds. It's like I'm yeah. looking at the card, like yeah, you know. But I, I don't know. It, to me, uh, RWA has uh, I'm going into certain shows. There's not really much that attracts you other than hey, it's another RWA show, and those people are going to every show. Yeah, I mean that's not doesn't make too much of a difference. I don't think. Unless it's like, okay, we're doing a cage match. We're doing some a special match this month, you know? This is kind of one of their tweener shows. The big surprise, I thought, was... Well, first, the first big surprise got canceled. Because Super Oprah was supposed to be there. Yeah, Super I Oprah was supposed to be there. Come and on. And then uh, it, something happened and she couldn't make it. Yeah, yeah. He, she, he, she couldn't make it. I don't know how to do this. We're going to make her a dude, Zorg. He, he she couldn't, couldn't make it. Him, her, wasn't able to wrestle his match. I don't know. I don't know if he is kayfabe. I don't. I, I don't know how it works. It really, this is this is new territory. Um, the ch- uh, uh, wrestle fan. I'm sorry. You have PhDs all the time in your area, so you're a little more comfortable with this situation. I guess, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I do have to say though, uh, Saturday was my birthday, and I, I didn't mind working the wrestling show uh, for Sorg like I normally do. Um, I, I do have to say though, uh, in breaking kayfabe, uh, uh, being included in the show. Uh, is one of the most unique birthday presents I could have ever gotten. And, and I'm glad he warned me about it beforehand instead of not warning me <laughs> like he was going to. Well, I, I, yeah, 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 you know. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more in, in gold, I think. Uh, but other than that, you know, yeah, Shane Douglas was there. That was kind of a last-minute booking. That's why it wasn't advertised in, in, uh, in advance. I guess uh, it just kind of popped up. Uh, he had a pretty good match with a... Uh, 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 Oh, Joseph, Joseph Brooks. Brooks. I almost want to say something Jacobs for some reason <laughs> popped in my head. I, <laughs> I don't know why I keep forgetting his name when I'm on the spot. Yeah, he's one of my favorite guys on the roster up there. Um, but he had a good match with, with Douglas that they took it out in the stands. Luckily, we were kind of uncorded. Yeah. And Chachi got to take it out outside. You'll see that on the DVD. Um, nice. So, so yeah, he was in the stands. It was out in the crowd. And, 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 and it was pretty cool because I was just watching... Uh, some of the uh, ECW Extreme Rolls on Netflix, um, and, and it was like, oh, it's just like, you know, what's going on there? So, um, so, and we also, I think, we figured out a way to handle those situations a little better uh, on our part on the production side. Other than that, um, so yeah, go check that out. Trailer will be up here uh, on the break, but let's get to the rest of it here, Russell fan. Yes, uh, coming up here uh, in the in the minute. I also want to mention the spectacular weekend uh, that was Chikara's King of Trios weekend. I heard it was. A absolutely astounding of, uh, series of events. Uh, the main event uh, in the finals of the King of Trios, your new King of Trios champions for 2012, are the Spectral Envoy of uh, Ultramantis Black, Hollow Wicked, and Frightmare. Uh, they won the entire tournament, defeating Team Ring of Honor in the finals. Uh, it was a, a great event from what I heard. A, a, lo- a lot of interesting stuff. King of Trios is always, always good. Um, and speaking of that... You can also, um, you can get King of Trios right now on Smart Mark Video in all of its forms, in DVD, in MP4, and in Video On Demand. Uh, they, they got it out the day after. I mean, amazing, uh, really great job by Smart Mark Video. They did such a stunning job of producing that content so quickly. Um, so if you want to go get that, you can go to smartmarkvideo.com or Smart Mark Video on Demand. Get all three nights of King of Trios already there. It's it, I definitely encourage you to get it because King of Trios is one show that everyone needs to see. And it's I it was highly uh, phenomenal stuff. So definitely go check them out and go check them out also at chikarapro.com for their upcoming events. Uh, and the next thing I want to talk about, uh, a show I attended this Sunday, which was Anarchy Championship Wrestling's Evolution of the Revolution. It was a phenomenal event. Th- for those that don't know, um, the backstory of this thing was all throughout the weekend, uh, there was heavy rain uh, and weather conditions going on throughout uh, Austin, Texas. 
uh, including the day of the show. For those that have never been to an ACW show in Austin, they hold it at the Mohawk, which is an outside uh, area to a bar. Um, they continued. Uh, they continued to have the show, um, and they did. It was. It was. It was so astounding how they produced it for everyone. None of the wrestlers held back. They gave a hundred and ten percent, even through the pouring rain. They did a great job. Every time, every time they finished with a match, they would squeegee out as much of the water they could as they possible from the ring. Um, and like I said, no one held back. Everyone gave it their all, even with the conditions. And I want to say thank. I want to personally say thank you to all the ACW roster for doing that because they never, you know. In that case, you don't need to do that. You know, some promotions, they would cancel a show. They would set it back or whatever. And it was mentioned that um, in 103 shows they've hold, they've held, all of 103, in five years they've been around, ACW has never canceled a show. And they continue that uh, with this event. I, I highly uh, recommend you check them out at anarchychampionshipwrestling.com. Um, they have, their next event coming up is October 21st, back in the Mohawk in Austin, Texas, uh, for Beyond Good and Evil, their uh, October event, their Halloween event, so they encourage you to definitely come to the event in costume. Uh, matches include Jacus Pliskin defending the uh, ACW Heavyweight Championship against Showtime Scott Summers. Friend of the show, Rachel Summerlin, will be taking on uh, her former tag team partner, Jessica James. Jerry Lynn continues his retirement tour against Gary J, another friend of the show. Uh, so go, go check them out, uh, anarchychampionshipwrestling.com. You can get all your tickets there. Get all your uh, information there. Uh, follow them on YouTube at uh, Anarchy Televised. Go check them out because they are phenomenal workers, phenomenal talent. And I'm so glad that uh, I got to uh, see a lot of their amazing events. Uh, so like I said, anarchychampionshipwrestling.com. More for that. Uh, and to continue in the Texas area um, – I went to an event Friday, uh, which, for those that listened to last week's Wrestling Mayhem show, we got in a pretty long discussion um, about uh, our good friends at the National Wrestling Alliance, what we thought of them uh, in sort of their new management, their new involvement. And I actually got the privilege of attending a uh, NWA Houston event uh, in Cypress, Texas. Um, and from what I saw, this is, I, this is sort of my thoughts from the whole show. Uh, the talent all around was great. It was a lot of talent, great talent from the Texas area. Uh, some ACW talent as well attended there. Uh, Rachel Summerlin in front of the show and uh, some others. Um, I thought the show was very well put together. Um, it was very consistent. Uh, everything seemed to be flowing right, and it looked very professional. Um, the setup they had. The uh, merchandising as well, it was very, um, like, we because we mentioned on the show last week about uh, some of the new things that NWA was putting in, and that was including merchandise, which they had NWA t-shirts, they had NWA uh, ball caps, etc., but they also had wrestling merchandise as well. Um, uh, it, it, was, it was a really entertaining event. Uh, I probably won't attend another one of their events just from, for the fact that it is a long drive. Um, I was, I was glad I actually went with somebody, so I was able to stay up for the entire trip. Um, but it was, it was honestly really, really fun. Um, I, I really appreciate them, uh, putting on such a consistent, consistently well put together show. Um, and they also announced that I guess the, uh, report is that NWA Houston is going to be the new home for the NWA, like the main base, I guess, in a sense. And they really? are... And they are saying that they are going to get some NWA champions in, including the NWA heavyweight champion, Adam Pierce. They did have NWA world junior heavyweight champion, Kevin Douglas, in to attend. Um, so I definitely would keep an eye on the NWA. Um, it, it, it was really, it was a really great show. And I do think, I do stand by what I did say last show. If the NWA, they do need to find, um, a better way of marketing themselves, possibly on television or the internet. Or just finding, you know, a more consistent way to get that out there. Show-wise, I thought it was great. Um, and it was not what you think of when you think of NWA product. It was very wild. It was very uh, highly entertaining. It kept my interest. Um, but I, don't, I do think if they could stay consistent with the internet, if they can, you know, power out um, on a good consistent show and get their name out there better, I definitely think they could be in the running to... You know, do something really good, and I and I would love to see that for the NWA. I know we kind of 
trashed them a little bit on the show last week, but I we will we all we want to see anyone succeed. You know, we want to see anyone prosper. And I yeah, would have yeah. Go ahead, Sork. Oh yeah, no, I just agreeing. Um, yeah, we 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 want all these indies to do good, so we have more choices. Oh yeah. So we see we see a lot of talent so that, more people, that gets you know, started these places. I mean, one of the great things is to see guys like like Ashima Zion or or anybody else, or or if you were like an old time IWC guy, seeing like AJ Styles through there before they were big people, CM Punk even. You know, we want to see more of that. We want to be able to get on the ground floor and have more options. You know, and and see who might be the next big guy that'll be hitting WrestleMania. You know what I mean? Uh, and the mm-hmm. more good groups like this to help, you know, fuel good talent, uh, the more yeah. the more chance something like that's going to happen. Yeah, definitely. And it, it it gives more opportunity to people, and I would love to uh, see that happen. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, definitely uh, go check them out. Um, uh, I will promote them. Uh, I believe it's nwahouston.com is their yes, website. It is. Yes, it is. Um, so go check them out and uh, go, uh, go support them. And the last thing I'm going to talk about uh, this week on the Indie Minute uh, is that Sorg, uh, Sorg, if you follow him on Twitter, at Sorgatron, um, he, <laughs> he was, he was, he was uh, I believe, Sorg, you actually got to check out some Ring of Honor. I uh, did. I was uh, little in this past weekend i was a little inspired because i uh, i attended a panel last week uh actually just posted today at podcampitsburg.com uh with the pyp uh group young professionals group and, and a couple of friends of ours friends of the shows uh at demons uh at sean graham on twitter uh we're having a good like out of nowhere they started talking i think it just happens because they know me as the wrestling guy amongst the group uh so they started talking about ring of honor i guess they catch it here of course it's here locally on the on our my net my pittsburgh or my network or whatever uh, affiliate, uh, like at least twice over the weekend. I usually catch the 1130 Sunday night if I ever do. Um, so, and, and they're really digging it. They like just that it's something different, I guess. You know, they, they like that it's kind of a low rent production in comparison to what they see in WWE or the other stuff. And they're loving the characters and everything like that. So uh, after the pay-per-view Sunday night, I just kind of flipped over to to Ring of Honor. And, and it's like, and like oh, OK, OK, it's still it still feels like a damn indie show in the long run. Yeah. Like just by watching it, it doesn't look any better. It doesn't look any better than what I'm putting out on my DVDs or you see on the Shikara DVDs or you're getting from, oh, what's another big one that's got really decent quality, uh, maybe in Evolve or a, or a Prime Wrestling or anything like that. It doesn't feel much different. It feels like the same kind of venues. They do, you know, they, they cover it up so it doesn't look like you're on a basketball court like we said before. I think they do a re- really decent job at that. Uh, but the production isn't as crisp as it was back with the HD Net side of things. Uh, of course, but really, I really thought the HD net production felt really devoid of any humanity as well. Um, it was too clean in the long <sighs> run, but uh, but I, it's still an entertaining show. I, I, I really think their message, like the few times I've dropped into it, it, there's not a clear message of where I go from here. Like there's the eye pay per views, which I think the stream was down from what I saw again. Yeah, there were reports that they uh, yeah, were problems that's, with their eye. That's not helping again. you guys if you're trying to pitch people to that to make you guys money. Um, they're pushing the live shows. It just feels like so much happens that I don't get to see. Like I feel like I'm watching uh, WWF superstars back in the day when everything happened on Raw on primetime wrestling at these local events on these things. It was like, oh, here's what happened at blah blah blah. I was like, well, why didn't I get a chance to see blah blah blah? You know, yeah. Um, it's like, oh, God, buy the DVD. I was like, well, that's 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 too much effort in the long run. You know, <laughs> I mean, it really it is, right? For the for the average person, if they're not getting if they're not getting enough out of just sitting there and watching that program every week, there are plenty, plenty, plenty of people that never buy a pay per view from the TNA or WWE, and maybe never have, but they get enough out of watching. And getting the highlights from what did happen at the pay-per-view on Monday Night Raw, on Friday Night SmackDown, on Saturday Morning Slam, you know, that that's their entertainment. Oh, I just got to tune into wrestling. You're not play. And I think I think that's and I think that's sort of a good and a bad thing, because you do. I think you have to find a balance where you want your fans to be watching both. Mm-hmm. You have to honest. That's true. What uh, the whole TNA thing. But a lot of times they just give stuff away. Like to the point where you didn't have to watch the iPay per view. Yeah. Or yeah. I mean the pay per view for TNA. 
Yeah. Like, for example, TNA, they put on the fucking main event again on Impact. And, and the X Division b- title match, too. Like, I, I was watching her, I'm like, what? Wait, we're doing this again? But wait, we're doing that again, too? You know, it was yeah. it was really surprising. And they really, I think TNA is doing a tremendous job of devaluing their pay-per-views. Oh, yeah. But so I think you do need to find that balance. Mm-hmm. You have to get them to watch your television show and the pay-per-views at the same time. And I think WWE because- has a good formula for that. We kind of get tired of it because like, oh, I got to get in our pay-per-view. You know, that's why streaming is so popular, I think, with them. It's like, well, I want to see it because that's where the good matches happen. But I get to play, see plenty otherwise, you know. Yeah. So the matches on Raw have been pretty decent, I will say. They got more time to play with. And I think that's that's really showing lately. Yeah. Uh, but this is the indie talk. So we'll push that away. <laughs> we'll push that away. Is there anything no, else? Indie, is there anything, anything else indie you want to talk about uh, before we get out of here then? Uh, that's all I have uh, for uh, this week in indie wrestling. Tremendous. All right. You now uh, we're going to go check out what's going on in WMS Gold. Remember to pick that up in your uh, app relative or your, your related app store, whether that be the Amazon app <laughs> store for the Android devices or the uh, uh, iTunes store for your iPad or iPhone or iPod Touch. New ones of those just got announced this week. And we'll take a little look at RWA Free For All 4, which is that going to be available uh, actually, you can get it on DVD now. Digital download should be within the next day or two. Uh, it's going to be the first Saturday day release for that. Uh, go check that out. SorgatronMedia.com slash store for all the latest ups. And, and go also check out that Best of Shima Zion that was released last week. Add Zima Ion for you TNA guys uh, that's over there. And we'll be right back with uh, Remember When. <laughs> Lunchbox, bust a move! No. Lunchbox isn't on the camp. Uh, mm-hmm. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. I like Chachi's, yeah. Uh, Chachi looks very similar, except now he has the, the green tarp behind him. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we'll, like, we'll, you we'll can't tell that. that it's in a different spot. We'll work on that so it's a little different. Do it. I'm going to put the pig on my Mountain Dew. It's Pig Dew. <laughs> <laughs> pig Dew. I just, I just crammed the 24-ounce Mountain Dew up this pig's ass. As fuck, cause I don't ride in a huge ass truck. I pop a wheelie on the street bike. Yeah, this fucking dude is nuts. And who we trust? The dude who bust and move it up. I've used the stuff to cruise and rush, booze and blunts. Fucked up. What do you want? This my life and this my right to take advantage of the drugs I'm given to escape into a greater state of living. I'm just racing to the finish, going nowhere fast. All it takes is just to. What's up, hot dogs? This is Papa Lunchbox coming back to you bringing the wrestling back i want to have a little discussion i want to go on what i like to call the journey of the mind come with me as we remember when kane the big red monster the big red machine big red pants stain that's right folks kane Through his many permutations, Kane has remained semi-relevant in the WWE almost throughout his entire career, largely through the fact that he has tagged with people. Kane, most recently, as you know, if you watch wrestling, and if you don't watch wrestling, why the fuck are you watching this show? Kane won his, what, 10th tag championship uh, with uh, one Daniel Bryan. So, I'd like to take a little trip down memory lane. Um, Kane memory lane. With our favorite Kane memories. Personally, my favorite Kane memory, uh, the one that made me go, holy shit, more than any other, is uh, I I think it's a spot he did twice. Once with X-Pac and again with uh, RVD, where he would be on the outside and after their tag team exploded. And uh, the little guy would jump through the ropes at him doing a suicide dive. And Kane would knock him right out of the air with a steel chair. Incredible. And uh, hands down, my favorite Kane moment right up there with when he set JR on fire using Mountain Dew. So, what about you? Hmm, hmm. I'm trying to remember exactly what this was. If I, I remember the visual, basically. Uh, I believe it was Lita marrying Edge. 
if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. And this time it was interrupted by Kane's head popping through the gr- the the floor, and the look in his face as he uh yeah utterly destroyed the thing from there on. Pops in my head. <laughs> so I just remember that visual again. It was when you know it was kind of earlier in the bald Kane era, bald shirtless Kane era. Um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, you know, he's, he's got that, he's got that eye thing going on, you know, with the, the with the one contact or something like that. And just remember that, that head popping up and, uh, and the visual from that. So, yeah. Russell fan? Uh, for my remember when of remembering Kane, I'm going to go back to around the time, a couple months of when I first started watching wrestling. I normally go that route because it makes it sound older, so I'm not yelled at. Um... <laughs> So, so uh, Kane, we mentioned, has held a lot of tag team titles, and he's had a lot of partners. But the best is when he retained the tag team titles by himself. <laughs> and that was in the four-team ladder match that they had on Raw. I think it was the first Raw roulette. And it was Kane, uh, I think the Dun Bubba and Spike, Jeff Hardy... Rob Van Dam, Chris Jericho, and Christian. And I remember watching that thinking it was the greatest fucking match ever. <laughs> and it was an amazing match. And that's one of the things I think like kept me into wrestling. Because I saw I you know, that match was phenomenal. And it and it was something that stuck out in my mind for a long time. And I was like, holy shit, Kane doesn't need the fucking hurricane. He won that shit by himself. And then they started the whole Katie Vick angle, which was another thing that was, and I guess, then interesting. It turned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. With that, all right. Thanks a lot for that. Whoa. Remember what? Wait, 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 wait. You didn't have anything. I don't. I want to explain why I don't have anything. Why don't you have anything? Because Kane's moments aren't memorable to me. They all blur together because they're all the same exact thing. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yes, because Kane electrocuting someone's testicles is the same as anything that's happened in pro wrestling ever. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying everything Kane does is along the same line, and it's been 15 fucking years. <laughs> that's what you're I'm saying. saying. You're mad because there's no development in Kane. It's, it's the same shit. How am I supposed to keep track of 15 years worth of uh, Kane doing incredibly weird shit to people? Well, you just need to watch that one episode where they were in the uh, the group circle, the hug circle, and he recounted of all of his crazy things he was involved in. No, I'll pass. Uh, that's good stuff. You're missing out. All right. Well, there's your remember when for this week. Now, um, we do not have a Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem, but we, what we do have is a submission, a late submission upon hearing this from AJ. Oh, fucking diggity. Here we go. <laughs> It was always loud. Oh, diggity. And it's time for your minute of mayhem. Hmm. Because Mad Mike is on vacation, I'm just going to cover this up. So, uh, this weekend, uh, we watched a pay-per-view that was called Night of Champions. And only two champions lost their title. Good job, WWE, for booking solid champions. Uh, I am also the tag team champions. Uh, sorry, Kane Daniel Bryan, but I am I am the tag team champion. Um, I didn't watch TNA uh, mostly because TNA is generally awful, and uh, they need to know better. <clears throat> Death before dishonor, I guess, was this weekend or last weekend or something like that, and nobody watches ROH. And uh, this week in wrestling data, uh, John Cena is 0-1 when wearing a pink t-shirt. <laughs> and this has been your Minute of Mayhem. Peace, bitches. <laughs> All right. And uh, also uh, from the chat room, uh, following up, uh, Big, PC's, Big PPC is in there. He says he buried his bro- came buried his brother twice and took out his dad. Yeah. Um... And Bobby F. J. Town says, remember that time that Kane was a dentist? And uh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Different uh, person. <laughs> no, completely. 
no. All right, now, 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 uh, LB, you you said you wanted to get into something. Uh, I think before we came back. Yeah, I got a little problem. I uh, I watched the pay per view on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was good. Mm-hmm. Super good, top to bottom. Even that main event. Mm-hmm. I thought but, so. Uh, something happened. Something happened in that main event that made me very upset. <laughs> John Cena pinned himself. Himself. He pinned himself. We've seen that ending to matches before where, um, like, oh, somebody's rolling through and the other guy flips over and they both think they pinned each other. But CM Punk was out. He was out. When when John Cena let him go, uh, Punk just kind of, like, flopped over and laid there for a little while. He wasn't doing anything intentionally. John Cena kind of germined him off the back uh, off the off the turnbuckle and <laughs> here's the problem like you don't have the wherewithal my shoulders are on the mat and uh that, that means i'm pinning myself this is he he, he says he loves this is his job in his entire world and both in character out of character what i was specifically saying in character this is the one thing he loves more than anything else in the world and he's the best at it he's amazing at it so on and so forth and he pinned himself he should have known better he should have known it's not like it's not like punk tricked him it's not like the referee didn't see a foot on the ropes it's not like something wacky happened. No, he just pinned himself. And I think all of those other scenarios have happened in other groups, uh, in other promotions, and other episodes of WWE within the past week. I just want to yes. Oh, yeah. All kinds of crazy shit going on. But John Cena just fucking pins himself. And then he wants another title shot. His incompetent ass wants another title shot. Come on. I am willing to suspend my disbelief to a wild amount, but give me something to work with. Mm -hmm. He just pins himself and he's like, nope, another title shot, this guy. (laughs) Come on! You know who should get a title shot? Hornswoggle. Yeah, where's Hornswoggle been? Give it to Hornswoggle. Not ruining uh, (laughs) storylines. He he can't pin himself like that. His arms are too small. (laughs) Oh, that's midget midgetous. You or are something. you are a tallest. Yeah, you in your tall state. Which is funny because he's actually on the short side. A little bit. But. I, I am. I, so if anyone can talk, it's me. Notice he always has a camera with that power shot to make himself look bigger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. You look about six feet tall there. It's a <laughs> complex. And he's like bit. four foot two. No, something like that. Um, oh, Lord. Yeah, I mean, it was it was an interesting end, but it, it, the other conversation that kind of went with this, I uh, in the hangout, I know, uh, as well, where it was like, and Russell fan, of course, uh, where it was like, well, this actually, I you can't be mad about them ending a pay per view like this because it doesn't happen too often with WWE. Oh no, I'm not mad. That it was it, no, 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 no. That's what you said. Yeah, you're not, fine. you're not mad because well, versus TNA, it was like, come on again. This made it special, made it something different, and made it worthwhile. And they had a great match leading up to it. That's true, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's not the fact that it ended in a draw. And I agree, TNA and other companies sort of saturated a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's so much out there that it doesn't feel special. It, it's um, it's the same effect. Remember when, like, the last time we had blood pop up? Okay, there was a CM Punk thing. But, like, there's a couple times beforehand where, like, uh, I want to say the John Cena, Brock Lesnar thing. Where they got they, they bled a good bit. Um, yeah. that was like, oh, oh crap, it's, this is happening, you know? Uh, it's because a sense it, of something different. Yeah, because they don't do it. They lightened up on it. So when it does happen, it's really, really important. Same with this. You don't get a weird screw job all the freaking time. So it's really important when something like this happens. And you can say, oh, blah, 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 controversial. Whereas TNA is doing something controversial every fucking week. And it just wears on you. But I do think that was the, it, the like it's the, while it's true that ending was the opposite of controversial. Yeah, it, it's not controversial. He it's like lunch lunchbox put it right. He pinned himself. Yeah. Now I never seen. You have to know how to bridge out of a German suplex. The difference is what usually happens here is something happens and you have a second ref that sees the shoulders from a different angle. 
Yeah. And that's where you get the, oh, who's the champion, blah, blah, blah stuff, right? Uh, that's usually what happens with TNA because they're a ref pump t- ref bump tastic out there, right? The, the, um, refs, the WWE refs, and, this, and especially Chad Patton in a sense, show like the sense that they're intelligent. Mm-hmm. As opposed to the TNA refs, who how the fuck do they have their job? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When they don't know how to fucking count pins, they are never in the right position, especially during ref bumps. I'm sorry, I hate, I don't. It's not that you bumped; it's the fact that you got bumped because you're standing behind the wrestler for some fucking reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, know your position. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, well, that's that's an yeah. Know your position. <laughs> I was in my position, and I got kicked in the dick. Well, then those are those <laughs> cases, and that's different. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Other than that, uh, otherwise, I thought, like, like LB was saying, a really good show, Night of Legends. Um, it really, Night of Champions. God, Champions have been so good up until, like, today. You um, always do that every year, though. Every year. Every, every year, fucking year. Um... No, I thought it was a really good show. It actually felt like we actually had all the belts defended, didn't we? Well, yeah. Right? It's not... No, no, no. That doesn't always happen. Especially it, the tag team so belts. It does on, well, it does on Night of Champions. No, it doesn't. It does yeah, Sometimes. It they... Good. No, they always it defend them. There, there was like one year where they did like the tag belts or something before and the Intercontinental Champion just wasn't defended at all or something. No, I remember no, that. they've defended them every year. Usually uh, it's in a match that has no build. That's true. Sure. Here's, a, here's a thing. There you go. There mm-hmm. you go. I'm trying to look up the Wikipedia here for this. Um, <laughs> no, no, but I'm pretty sure they, they've had the belt suspended. And yes, I completely, I completely searched for Night of Legends again. <laughs> I can't, Sword, I can't get out of this. But no, and from what I heard, it was a, it was a pretty decent show. Um the only complaint I have, and I mentioned it before, can we do something with Sheamus and Del Rio? Anything? Because this is, what, the tenth time we've seen them wrestle? <laughs> and Sheamus has always won? It does feel like SmackDown gets in a rut like that. You know? I, I, yeah, I, especially when you... But they like, did like, something. Th- they did... They what? investigated right? the bro kick. That's right. They investigated the bro kick. But it's well, it's like feud, you better though. not come up on SmackDown. Have another four way for the number one contender and have Del Rio win yet again. Yeah, that's Del the Rio thing. I was like, oh, we're gonna have about. a match to get a number one contender again. Yeah. And we're gonna throw on you because you were just in a match. Oh shit, you won again. That's but convenient. It, oh yeah, you yeah. win. No, no. But that's the thing. It's a formula. Yes, they added the whole ban the bro kick thing, but the formula has always been the same. Sheamus beats Del Rio. Del Rio complains about it. Del Rio gets put in a number one contenders match on SmackDown. Del Rio wins the number one contenders match. It's been like that for like five or six months, and mm-hmm. I'm really getting tired of it. Okay. Hey. Hey. Tag team match player. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. We get to put the tag team. Match. And what is next? It's Hell in the Cell, so um, almost you can guarantee everybody's going to be a rematch. I think. Probably. I, I so, really. Got, I, I mean, no, because we got Rye back in the Miz now. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I mean the two big. It's got my nipples <laughs> rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the big belts. I really mean the big belts. So. Team friendship and Kofi and our uh, truth in a cell. I'd love to see that. I, I wish. I mean, I, by the way, let's put the divas in the cell. Fuck, let's do that. I mean, no, let's get a blood feud between somebody going on here. Even no, 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 no. But no. but uh, honestly, that. especially oh. after last night's Raw, holy shit! It looks like we have a tag team division. Uh, all kinds of a tag team yeah. division, man. And the thing Very that I'm loving it. Out, the thing that was pointed out to me that makes it so obvious. It seemed the pr- the biggest problem I have with the tag division. Every time the belt changes hands, whoever loses the belt always breaks up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah like I was... One guy that's pissed at the other guy and they break up. Yeah, yeah. I, that just happened at, a, at an indie show this past week. And it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> do we know yeah. anything else we can do other than break them up because of this? You know? Right. I, is, TNA has the same problem. Lose the belt, break up. Uh, come on. That's, that's lazy. That's just really lazy. lazy. Um, but no, we, you got enough going on there. I mean, well, we got we got Mysterio Sakara, which is really a building. I think it's great. You know, like a lot of people say, like it's like they cover up each other's botches. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so it turns into a really good show. Hey, um, you guys are kind of the same. Let's put you in a tag team. But it makes sense. You guys are both black tag team. Well, hey, you guys are black Reagan, too. Tag team. Tag team. Even you guys both wear masks. Even to tag the point. team. But it makes sense. Why not? That's how most of these tag teams. You start. guys are both Mexican or uh, uh, Jamaican or uh, Jamaican. Puerto Rican. Uh, Puerto Rican. You, you guys both, are both you Puerto guys Rican. Both, you guys <laughs> both have blonde hair, and they turn themselves into Hollywood blondes. Look, look, look what happened. You know, I mean, uh, people you are being both thrown together. Shit and you're in the tag team. Hey, guess what? You guys are both mad. Tag team. Here's the belts. Well, that's what they used to do when we had no tag team division. But now it's like there's stuff going on, and the people. Ah, even Saturday Morning Slam had a really entertaining tag match. This isn't match. a tag team anymore. This is race wars. These, oh, yeah, look at the history. What was the? You guys are both white and mad tag team. Here's your uh, rebel flag. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, wait, I mean, look at look at one of the big ones. You had you had one of the biggest uh, tag team division rivalries of the past like decade and a half. Were from uh, uh, South Carolinians, uh, uh, Canadians, South and, and interracial brothers. South Carolinians. Cal- South Carolinians? No, I think so. Right? Uh, right? What, but no, it, it, it's always been something like that, you know. Um, Especially look back in like the eighties or something. You had the British Bulldogs. You had a Hard Foundation. You had Demolition. You had uh, uh, the Bolsheviks. Um, Bolsheviks. Help me out! Help me out here. <laughs> I know there's more. Um, Killer bees. Uh, La Resistance. Oh, we're both La French. La Resistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Quebecers. The, 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 the Rougeau brothers. Yeah, the Quebecers. Yep. Um, we're Canadian. Yeah, the yeah. Hard Foundation. We're Canadian. Yeah, so Los, exactly. uh, even stables, Los Bariquas, yeah. uh, Nation of Domination. Yeah. Even though Owen Hart was in there, uh, Edge and Christian because they're both awesome. DOA, the Becker Gang. I mean, it, it's all about hey, stuff like that. Stop, uh, uh, Chachi or uh, Chachi. Stop, Chavo and Hernandez in TNA. What? There's a difference between everything you just said and what WWE is doing now. What's the difference? All of those teams came in as teams. Not necessarily. Ninety percent. Ninety percent of what you just said. But no, no, came in no, as no. teams. Hold on, hold on. The Usos have always been a team. Primo where and Epico where are, cousins, are they? So they're no, no, no. Primo and Epico are cousins, they're around. so they're obviously going to be paired up. Yeah. You know, maybe Titus O'Neil and Darren Young, or Kofi and Our Truth, maybe. But you know, you no, Titus, Titus O'Neil and Darren Young were repackaged to be this team. I don't believe they existed before this. Because no one wants Fuck. NXT, which is whatever. Fuck their red glasses <laughs> and their <laughs> black Which Titus O'Neil no, and Darren Young are doing better than three-fourths of the people that have won NXT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they're more important. They're doing something. They're on TV, like, every week. They have you a know, whistle. They're doing great stuff. They yeah, have, and, I could do without that goddamn whistle. And they have a rape whistle. <laughs> no, no, the whistle's a great touch. Titus <laughs> no. O'Neil is my fucking favorite. No, the whistle is not a great touch. <laughs> yeah, uh, them chanting millions of dollars is enough. It's awesome. I don't, That's I don't, a pretty great touch. I don't <laughs> need a whistle to go with that, all right? Even, even the barking is a little too much. No, Every single week, awesome. they start barking, and Sarah goes, "This is racist. Why is this also <laughs> racist?" And I'm like, "Honey, it's wrestling." <laughs> <laughs> I can deal with the Afro pick while they're saying millions of dollars. All right, but the whistle has got to go. You'll we'll, you'll end up loving the the whistle like three months from now for oh, some yeah. reason. Um, no, no, no way, man. I didn't I didn't love the whistle after fucking uh, what the hell was his name? The ECW guy who always had the whistle. Bill Alfonso. Alfonso, yeah. Bill that guy Alfonso. Was, that guy was I didn't annoying. love the fun thing when nope, he had it, nope, so I'm nope. not going to love it when these have it. Uh, let's see. Alfonso thinks the whistles are okay from, uh, I believe that's uh, uh, Ciro. Well, that, no, 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 the Alfonso, well, Alfonso blew the whistle throughout the entire fucking match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, is that much different than Jimmy Hart with the bullhorn? Yes. Uh, he was fucking annoying. It is much different. How? Speaking of throughout the fucking match, can we be done with this goddamn Vicky Guerrero experiment, please? <laughs> I mean, I've joked in the past about her giving me a giant erection, and she still does, but her voice kills it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I'm hard. Oh, she opened her mouth. She also, opened good, her also, mouth. Also, really job that we're following up on um, the fact that Vicky Guerrero beat up her boss. Yeah, they just kind of went away. Oh, uh, yeah, no, 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 but you know what? There wasn't been a following up because there was a great tweet. Twitter doesn't count, Sorg! 
Twitter doesn't count. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. We just, wait, we just had uh, 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 the match of a lifetime where Twitter counted. And now you're going to turn around and say that Twitter doesn't count. Wait, what do you mean what match of a lifetime when Twitter counted? Rock and Cena. Yeah. Rock and Cena. A lot of Rock and that Cena took place on That's how they're filling that. three DVDs. Whatever. With tweets. Tweets. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Twitter does not count in ending storylines because... No, it, no, no. It's not an ending. I'm not saying it's an ending. I'm saying it's a continuation. It's, Hold the fuck on. If, if WWE <laughs> is not going to acknowledge the fact... <laughs> God damn it, I love it when WrestleFan gets that, feisty. That's, that's, <laughs> listen, that song um, said to Bret Hart, I'm just following in your image and living up to your living up to your name when Bret Hart compliments him. And then on Raw, CM Punk says that he's old crap and shouldn't be around anymore. Then no, you don't get to take Twitter into account fucking storylines. Fuck that. There's a difference between when CM Punk tweets and when John Cena tweets. Because when CM Punk tweets, it's just whatever the fuck he wants to say. When C- when John Cena tweets, that is fucking kayfabe every single time. Kayfabe and marketing, that's it. But that's the entire reason why CM Punk wore the pink tights. But, they're, they're, but they had to have him come out of Raw and say that Bret Hart is old and decrepit and shouldn't be around just so he can get the heel heat. Hey, man, it's a crazy mixed up world we're living in. Bret Hart is old and decrepit and shouldn't be around. I'm not saying he's that not true. lying. <laughs> you can show respect and tell someone not to fucking show up he's at the saying, same time. He's saying what everybody else is thinking, and that's why he's getting the chance in his favor. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just waiting for WrestleFan to be like, hold the fuck on again, because I love it. <laughs> the chat room is revolting on that. On what? Uh, nobody tells Sword to hold me. the it's fuck on. Surprise. Nobody! <laughs> we already put him in the corner. You can't treat him like that. We're going to put him in the corner. We're going to piss on him. We're going <laughs> to... Well, I'm not no? pissing on you. <laughs> when I was waiting for the show to start. Oh fuck! Uh, what else is going on here, guys? Uh, wait, I I gotta oh. address something. Okay. Uh, on Facebook, I think it was WrestleFan who posted it. It might have been Riz. I don't know, but someone uh, put up a picture of John Cena in his pink shirt. That that uh, was me calling oh. him a hypocrite because uh, uh, he made fun of CM Punk stealing Bret Hart's colors. Yeah, I would like to address that by saying that CM Punk or not CM Punk, John Cena wasn't stealing Bret Hart's colors. John Cena was going along with the breast cancer thing that it took me two matches to figure out was going on <laughs> on the pay-per-view because I had no fucking clue why the middle rope was pink. Yeah, they, they really I like, I like the pink rope. I had no problem with the pink rope. <laughs> well, good. I got you know, if you follow WWE on Tout and Twitter <laughs> and Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram, yeah, what a fucking no I had, I had no idea. I tuned into the pay per view, bam, pink fucking rope. <laughs> it took it, it took two matches. No warning. <laughs> it took two matches for me to figure they out. They didn't put the little fucking ribbon on the logo of the pay per view or anything. <laughs> Did they? No, but you know okay. what? I, I just I get, I get your punk. I get your point on the CM Punk Bret Hart thing, Chachi. You know what else is also ironic about CM or John Cena wearing pink now? Huh. And I get it's because of breast cancer. But how many times has he made fun of uh, uh, people for looking or uh, for being gay for wearing pink? When? I I, I'm pretty sure he's done it with like talking about Dolph Ziggler in his pink T-shirt. Notice how what? notice how John Cena wears the pink now. Really? Dolph Ziggler doesn't have his pink T-shirt anymore. Damian Sandow switched from pink really? tights to purple tights. This happened? Did this happen? I don't. Wrestle think fan, I think this is a fabrication uh, to prove yourself right. Or is it very? Or, but is it, uh, is it not proof. true? Where's it's the true. proof? Where's the proof? Go to your memory boss. Find his clips of John Cena making fun of homosexuals I, wearing pink. Millions of, videos, millions of videos, millions of videos, millions of videos. Dolph Ziggler <laughs> and Damian Sandow have been supporting breast cancer for the longest fucking time. No, they don't Nobody get any respect. No, they were can, wearing can, can pink. We, can we specify here? They're supporting breast cancer awareness. Nobody supports <laughs> breast cancer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's very like, confusing you know, message. We do the same thing with the uh, with MS. Rob, the MS thing. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what uh, the wow. Fuck? Um, hold the fuck on. Hold no, the fuck I, I, I on. Just, hold the fuck go on. Go ahead. I have nothing. I don't know where to go from that. I, like I said, Saturday night, Saturday morning slam was fantastic. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and I love that I live tweeted and people respond to me. <laughs> so I, I'm not the love, only one I, watching it at 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. Oh shit! I, didn't I, even I think I, I was awake at 10 a.m. I, I so can't. I apparently can't sleep past 7:30 on the weekend for some reason. So. Yeah, that was oh, a problem. Oh, no, Sunday. I was up. I was playing video games because re- there's no wrestling on Saturday mornings. Now there is, Chachi! No, there's not. <laughs> Just like there's no such thing as NXT. There was a tremendous thing where they, uh, they, 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 it was the international episode. They replayed that thing we saw from Justin Gabriel like a few months ago where, uh, where he went home and Bobby, uh, Bobby FJ Town noticed that, uh, <laughs> so it's within the chat. Um, I think you skipped the number um, where where they call they call Justin Gabriel uh, a boy in one of the articles, apparently. Um, and they had a, a great around the world in 40 wrestlers where they touched on all of them. I think like it was, it was like Johnny Gargano or somebody was n- like was like, oh, my God, it's 2000. You know, it's 2012. And, and they brought up like Papa Shango and such and such and such. They even touched on parts unknown, Chachi. They shouldn't be touching parts unknown on Saturday morning. Hmm. That's when a lot of kids watch wrestling. And then we had a very international tag that's team match. That's why Jerry Sandusky where he's at today. Yes. Yeah. Oh. That's why they, have, they had a very international tag team match of uh, Truth and Kofi versus uh, Epico and Primo. That was really funny. International. Just because they're black doesn't mean they're international. So one guy's from, like, West Africa. Kofi the other guy's from, from Ghana, Puerto West Rico. Africa. And and where's our truth from? I'm going with our parts unknown. Our truth is from Blackton. <laughs> it's in Brooklyn. Look it up. Nerd. Blaxico. Blaxico. Uh, he is from Blaxico. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh, <laughs> Line of the man. night. Line of the night goes to sort. Uh, no, but it was a fun match because there was, there was uh, an Epico and Primo are from the United States. No, they're not. They're from Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico's part of the United States. Well, that is true. That partially, is true. Chachi. Partially. <laughs> partially. Listen, but, if the no. government put them on the back of a fucking quarter, they did. Yeah. No way. They're part of our country. Good for no them. way. It's, why is Primo and Epico on a quarter? Not Primo and Epico, <laughs> Puerto Rico. Hey, if they put oh. Rosa Mendez on a hey. quarter, I'd be fine with that. If you if you had a cold and said Primo and Epico really fast, it would kind of sound like Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I did plan. I was playing all along. Muscle fan, I don't think anybody's ever whacked off to a quarter before. <laughs> <laughs> Show title. New mission. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that that, that picture in oh, Texas. Oh looks George hot. Washington. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, there's a buffalo in the back of this corner. Yeah. yeah. Where's my lotion and Kleenex? That's a candy. <laughs> if you're not in the hangout, you don't know why that's funny. <laughs> I just saw a challenge accepted in the chat room. <laughs> what is going on? WMS 338 whacking off to a quarter on a buffalo. On a buffalo. <laughs> oh, God, we got to get out of here. It's so late. Um, uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I know I learned a lot this episode, Chachi. Uh, I learned that I don't care what Kane does anymore. That's good. That's good. All right, how about you, LB? In chat room, hit uh, us up. I, I learned that uh, John Cena doesn't know that you can't pin yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he did not read the rule book that we always didn't. hear about. Didn't. We should write that down. We should we should collaborate and we should come up with an actual professional wrestling rule book. What the rules are actually supposed to be. Mm-hmm. That would be interesting. What that? Including mean? holding that little that little uh, when you tag. <gasps> Wrestle fan, what'd you learn? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that uh, in their new partnership, uh, WWE and Vince McMahon are going to partner up with Storage Wars just so every time that Vince McMahon buys a storage unit, they're going to have Ryback run in and destroy all the furniture. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> all right. All right. Fuck your couch! <laughs> no way. WWE's starting a movie, moving company. 
<laughs> from the chat room, uh, Rizayup says, I learned that I'm the tag team champions. AJ learned that during Young Horde's Wang. Wow. Yeah, because I think he said Wang in his promo. And he's getting really angry because you're not quoting your source, Wrestle fan. Okay, so that was I. Well, I learned it. I did. I didn't say I thought of it. Um, it's from the uh, uh, best and best and worst of Raw on withleather.uprocks.com, written by the very uh, impressive Brandon Stroud. There you go, which, and which everyone thinks I am. Apparently, the guy you rip off every single. I don't week. rip him off. I know him. Thanks. I know him thanks, in like thanks, real life. Thanks, so. Russell fan, for bringing Brandon Stroud to our show. Rip off, <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Uh, Stop ripping them off. Again, thanks. Uh, what? 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 Uh, now, Bobby's saying he learned that uh, Way Barrett is open for business, and Ryback just needed some subs, and he's full now. So uh, there <laughs> ends the tale of Ryback. Oh shit, a couch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Wrestling Revolution, I believe that's zero two K says, uh, and Orton swears on camera. Uh, and oh, I think he had something else. Let me see if I can bring that up here. Can I ask uh, something I learned, before we I leave? Learned, I learned wet AJ Lee. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I learned JBL is the greatest announcer ever. And the other thing. Um, hold before on, oh. we leave. Yes. yes what sir. is what is Wade Barrett selling? It's open for business. I think we were really Hitman or something, right? He's selling his sweet, violent body. Oh. oh. Because the only yes. thing I could tell was sleeveless, sleeveless t-shirts, or Sleeve. or mantis with your name on the back and a little flag. Mantis, I'd buy them. I'd buy them from Wade Barrett. That accent and that facial hair would sell me anything. <laughs> huh. <laughs> that, huh. That facial hair can sell me. And I learned this weekend that we're that Pittsburgh is apparently known for mid- giving middle fingers. Huh. Really? Yeah, the that Pittsburgh was weird. salute. Yeah, yeah, that that was that was. I'm like, I didn't know that's what we were known for, Shane Douglas. Thank you. Yeah. So, and also, uh, not a family show. Yeah, I don't know I if thought... Shane Douglas should be allowed to teach anyone anything. <laughs> <laughs> he was a dean, Chachi. He was a dean. <laughs> you could, this is true. You could have fooled me. <laughs> but so dean that was still that was still an entertaining match. I thought. So, all right, with that, guys. You weren't the one that had to go outside. No, what, did you have a problem outside? Was It no. wasn't raining or anything, was it? God, no. there's so many more in here. I learned that Cena can pin anyone, even himself. <laughs> uh, I learned that, that... The only person Cena puts over is himself. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. All right, with that, guys. Hey, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Go uh, uh, check out all of our stuff. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find us uh, in the most convenient of places that is close to you in the iTunes store. Um, iTunes, yeah, in video audio formats. Uh, we're also on Blip TV on your Roku device on the Blip TV app on Stitcher on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, so go check us out all those places and also uh, drop us a line to that fine email address at Good Times. Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and the phone number 412 206 WMS0 on that dial we're at mayhem, matt mayhem show on twitter please tag us uh at wms338 i believe it is for this show maybe it's 339 no it's 338 it is 338 people are saying 339 in the chat room I, I, I can't tell i know i, I bumped them ahead accidentally on the blog so um and uh and, and yeah we're also on facebook we got a wonderful open group there uh as well as a page and google plus so please converse with those in all those locations we keep an eye out for for, for all that stuff um and also buy the app dollar 99 in your amazon store and the other store uh for ios uh you guys are still picking it up so thanks a lot for supporting the show um that that buys us you know like a, a new mouse or something uh so keep that up keep it up guys we've, we've sold a good bit of them over but like, we've been doing that for about what two years now so we've, we've yeah. had, there's a lot of apps out there now so I hope you guys are still enjoying that. Or if you haven't checked it in for a while, go check in and see what we're doing on the on the gold. Um, we'll end world hunger. Buy more apps. <laughs> <laughs>
Sure. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week uh, for the Mayhem Show. Join us here live in the chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We get started sometime after 8.30 p.m. Eastern, depending how the rest of the night goes, and we hang out until 10, 11 o'clock, whenever the show ends. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Go to sorgatronmedia.com for everything else we're doing and all the columns and videos at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We'll see you guys next week for WrestleFan, DJ Lunchbox, Chachi, R Mayhem Show. Out. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait.